Hi everyone, welcome. Good morning. A very good morning to you all. I hope you all are doing well. Yeah, thanks for joining in. Hi Simran, hi Charles, hi Kennedy, hello, Abinas, Kung, Asha, hi, hey Tharun, hi Zidant, hey Kishan, thanks for joining in guys. Yeah, uh, let's get started. Can I request uh, one of us to uh, please uh, start us off with a word of prayer? Go on, on there. Anyone, please uh, pray. Let's pray. Yes. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful time that you have allowed us to meet together again. For this week, Lord, we are praising you that for this course we will be completing two complete months, Lord, this week. Lord, we praise you for the fire you have brought us. And now, as we set ourselves, Lord, we pray that you will give us the spirit of contentment, that we will be contented and ready to learn, that all will be ready for us, that whatever you have planned for us to get from this call, be able to build the ministry that you have appointed us to do on this earth for the glory of your name and the good of your people. For in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. Man, thanks, Fox. Thank you. All right, guys. Uh, hi again. I hope you all are doing well. Uh, and this, having a good week so far, and you've been able to uh, learn a lot of things uh, in your final in this semester uh, so far. Okay. So uh, just very quickly, let's uh, go through what we've covered in the in the last chapter. We started off. Uh, in chapter four, the worship ministry, and looking uh, more specifically at the organizational aspect of it, and right? how the uh, how the worship ministry is organized at APC, uh, to be more specific. Um, right? So we looked at how it's the senior pastor, and under the supervision of the senior pastor is the worship pastor, and under the supervision of the worship pastor, there are multiple teams like the band and the sound team, the media team, um, the singers, uh, etc. Right, And um, we very briefly, let's quickly recap the seven roles of uh, the worship pastor. Right, The seven roles of a worship pastor. Uh, the first one is the worship pastor as a priest. He's a bridge builder. Uh, he's the connector. Um, right, And the worship pastor as a prophet. And we are encouraged to declare uh, over our team, over the people that you are leading, um, and a worship pastor as a teacher. That's the third role. And worship pastor as the pastor itself is that you are shepherding uh, your flock, uh, you are leading them, you are guiding them. Worship pastor as an intercessor, as a mentor, uh, as an administrator. Finally, right? That's what we looked at. So, uh, just just a quick reminder that. Uh, leading a worship ministry uh, is very different uh, from worship leading, and if we can get that, uh, you know, in, uh, remember that, then you know you've understood fifty percent of worship ministry. Right? Worship ministry is uh, leading a worship ministry is not the same as leading worship, and um, and then when you dive in a little bit more and you see what are the roles of the worship pastor, and you get to see all these uh, seven things, um, then you begin to understand that there's more to it than just leading worship uh, in a Sunday morning, um, right? And this is not an exhaustive list. Um, this is just some of the points that's been, um, that we put together as a team. Uh, but yeah, so there we have it. And uh, we very briefly also spoke about uh, rehearsals, the difference between practice and rehearsal. That practice is personal, is what's something that you practice at home. You, the song list is sent, you work on the songs, uh, and rehearsal is something that you do, uh, is, is relational when you get together as a band in a studio, and then you, uh, you, know, you work on the song or the entire set list, you plan the transitions, the flow of the songs, um, everything to be specific. And 
and how you need to encourage one another uh, to be skillful to push one another to be skillful in uh, your strengths um, or your your major instrument per se right and in page 45 uh, we looked at some of the skills of a worship leader is expected to have some of the skills of a worship leader is effective musical skill organization and preparation experience practice leadership ability relational ability calling character intuition uh, natural gifting god's grace um, all of these are expected skills um, that the worship leader is supposed to have uh, is expected to have and along with that if you are the ministry leader if you are the senior pastor um, and you are the worship pastor and you are you know getting worship leaders into your team uh, some of the questions that you need to be asking is look is seen in page 46 of the notes right some of the questions that you can ask is um, are they humble uh, do they have a vibrant secret life with God are they able to take direction correction and the list goes on are they skilled are they loving gentle generous etc etc so uh, those are all the pointers um, you know that it's it's good for us to look at right and I hope that's clear so far um, right, with everything that we've covered okay so now we'll continue to look uh, we'll move on from page 47 um, in this chapter 4 of uh, the organizational aspect of the worship ministry okay uh, page 47 um, we start, begin to talk about auditions right uh, um, auditions um, how many of you understand what an audition is you understand what an audition is you um, you've seen uh, all these uh, famous uh, American Idol, Indian Idol, and, and all these shows, reality shows, that's the word I was looking for, right? And they have auditions for it. So uh, we kind of have a basic uh, understanding, an idea of what an audition is, right? Yes, no, maybe? Yeah. And uh, so a very simple question to all of us is, uh, why would you say uh, having an audition uh, for those who want to join the worship team is important? Why, why is an audition important? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Uh, would you have an audition uh, in your church if you were the worship pastor? If not, why so? Okay, yes, it's important. Oh, wow, okay, there's uh, quite a few yeses. What are, uh, so wh why is it important? Yeah, sorry, Avni, go ahead. So it's like, it's not just about your will to do the work. You should have the talent and skill also, and how much you are dedicated to that talent. Like, uh, we, we learned about uh, practice and rehearsal, and sharpening your skills so along with the will to worship along with the will to worship the lord you should have that talent also because you're leading the entire congregation uh, and that skill has to be sharpened as well as your submission to the lord and your submission to the uh, team and everything needs to be in place right yeah thank you thank you for sharing that um, anything else? Why uh, why is it important? Uh, why auditions are important? Uh, what happens when you uh, say you don't have a process like an audition in a local church? and you just put up a, a, a sign board saying everyone anyone who wants to join the worship team uh, you are welcome to join um, so that is a process without an audition so what happens then
Yes, sir. Go ahead. Thank you, Pastor. So when there's no process, you're just welcoming this order. And you're going to get people who are not uh, fully committed. You just get people who want to just try it out and um, may not stay too long. And uh, it just becomes cumbersome, becomes a burden on whoever is leading. So having a process mm-hmm. basically helps to screen out, vet out those who really are serious and who are mm-hmm. really going to stay, you know, to serve in the worship team. And that way also you'll be able to know their strength. And at least not fully, mm-hmm. but at least just from questioning and interviewing them, right. knowing their background, and not just even just the ability to sing, you also want to know the person, right? Um, at least the first contact yeah. would give some um, bird view of where they stand spiritually and how you see them, you know, yeah. driving the worship team. So the process is really important. If, uh, if we really want a serious and a formidable and a good worship team that would last. Yeah. Right. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you for that uh, wonderful insight. Um, yes, we're just getting to know the person uh, in addition to their gifts and uh, and their talents and whatnot, right? Uh, it's important. Um, now, uh, Paul Belosh, uh, one of the worship leaders, uh, you, we, we might all know who Paul Belosh is, right? Uh, uh, so he says this, uh, he said, it is easy to add to a team than to undo a team, right? Um, say that again. Uh, it is easy to add to a team than to undo a team. What does that mean? So when you don't have a process like uh, audition, and when you just put up a signboard, say anyone who wants to come join the worship team, you're welcome to join, you're adding to the team. And that seems very easy. And then you realize, oh, okay, Yes, you know, there are certain challenges, character challenges, attitude challenges, skill challenges with a certain individual. And as we discussed last class, musicians are very sensitive people, <laughs> right? And, uh, you know, asking them or telling them that, hey, you know, we can't have you on the team any longer because of so and so. Uh, it's it's hard, isn't it? You're undoing a team, then uh, things can get awkward. Uh, you know, I mean, you, you will end up doing, making decisions. You have to do it, but then uh, it just becomes awkward, uh, right? And just quite challenging. That person might get offended or bitter and leave the church if they are not mature enough to handle the situation, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, right? Um, so, and I mean, I think we can kind of conclude. Um, it doesn't matter the size of the church. It absolutely doesn't matter, right? Um, but having a process. Um, I'm not sure if I should say a filtering process, but having a process in general, uh, you know, to be sure who you're adding to the team is very, very essential, is very important. And so that is why we hold auditions. So uh, some of the pointers that's uh, been mentioned in the notes are have a focus point for people to connect with worship ministry. So that's the first thing, right? You're having an audition. So that's like a touch point. Right uh, in the IT world, if you're in the app thing, we talk about different touch points of different customers. Okay, hey, when they land here, that's their first touch point of the app or the product and whatnot. Right. So, for people, for for the congregation, uh, auditions can be one of those focus points where they can get connected to the worship ministry, and you know, in in worship ministry, they get connected to the worship pastor, worship coordinator, worship administrator, etc. Right. Um, why we hold auditions to add people to the worship team. We need to grow, right? We want our team to grow. That's another reason we can't remain, uh, you know, the same size where we are. Sometimes people come in and sometimes people move on. And that happens quite a lot at APC where um, sometimes people, you know, three of our, um, of our worship leaders went on to study in different country and all of a sudden we are three worship leaders short. And so we hold you know, auditions to add people to the team so we can grow as a team, right? Um, To increase the level of musical presentation of your music, um, to provide a consistent, common, and helpful method for growing worship ministry personnel, 
right, to provide a consistent, common, and helpful method, right, uh, to give away and expand ministry as we, uh, you know, uh, as I've mentioned. So the current audition process at APC, and I'm, I'll take you through it in detail, uh, you know, in just a minute but uh when we're looking at page 47 so the current audition uh, process at apc worship uh, worship team auditions will be held uh, once or twice a year based on the requirements uh and you know during the covid time we did not have uh we did not uh, hold auditions for obvious reasons right uh prior to the audition there will be pre-audition meeting uh, where those interested in auditioning can be briefed on the vision goals of worship ministry okay so before the audition itself let's say for example today uh the coming sunday what's the coming sunday is october 2nd right so let's say october 2nd uh, sunday october 2nd is the audition day uh the previous sunday that is september 25th uh, will be a pre-audition meeting where everyone who's registered for the audition uh, we know we will meet with them. We will take them through the process. We will tell them like, this is how the audition is going to be, the time and the place, uh, you know, uh, what is expected, etc. Just to ease into it so that they are, they don't just show up on the audition day, and uh, and are very nervous because generally people are nervous during the audition process. But uh, to make it as comfortable and convenient and easy uh, as possible for them you get to know them in the pre-audition meet and you tell them hey it's okay you know there's nothing much to worry about just take it easy learn the songs and whatnot so that's the pre-audition meet and then we have the audition itself okay um so let me just share the screen of one of the documents that i wanted to share um, okay Okay, um, hope you can all see um, the screen. Okay, so a couple of things that uh, what we do is when we, uh, you know, we we make a video announcement uh, during the service saying that we're going to have worship team auditions on the 2nd of October, at least a month in advance. And we, you know, share with them the registration link to the form where they can register. Um, a couple of uh, expectations that we have from the people is they must be 18 and above because until then they you know parents are what do we say um, I don't want to use the word paranoid but <laughs> the parents are particular about their kids doing well in their exams right the board exams and 16 to 18 and whatnot and also so from 18 onwards not not that life becomes easy but <laughs> uh, well, that's the process so 18 um, they should be uh, attending APC for at least um, the three months in the last three months um, you know so that's a couple of things okay so when they um, when they fill in the registration form uh, what we do is um, this is the email that we send out uh, we say hey uh, thanks for coming forward to audition um, to serve in the worship team blah 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 you know please come prepared we send out the list of songs uh, to everyone who registered for the audition so we say okay please come prepared with the songs that are listed in the category categories uh, for which you have applied for so now they, they they could have registered for singing male or singing uh, you know female uh, girls um, they might have registered for acoustic guitar electric guitar bass guitar and keyboard and drums of course okay and if you notice so uh, we send um, the name of the song the key in which they can prepare the song or learn the song in come and we also send the YouTube link okay so uh, you know when they come prepared with specific songs so audition here is not like saying okay we're going to have worship team auditions come and sing whatever you want to sing uh we don't do that we uh, we make it more simpler actually we ask them to learn only two songs and sometimes we might ask them to sing only one song um you know and uh, on the day of the audition you know just to push them a little bit more we will check with them hey can you sing the song in a higher key or a lower key uh, etc 
um, can you sing harmony you know that's pushing it but then you know we like to do that so that's what we do so we send out the list of songs as you can see and uh, okay And I'm just going a little slow so that you can take a look. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. And then we go into the details. We say we will have auditions after the service at APC Central uh, by around 12.30 PM. Uh, please come prepared and stay back for a couple of hours, especially if you're auditioning in multiple categories. So there will be an individual who've registered for, say, drums and keyboard. Right, so we have to figure out. Okay, so you know how you can how we can fit that in. So maybe he can audition first for keyboards and then go and audition for drums. Um, right, so we inform them about that as well. Uh, and some of the highlighters and pointers that we send out is: if you're auditioning for playing an instrument, please learn your parts in all the songs listed under your category. Uh, don't overplay, underplay. Uh, there will be an accompaniment track that you will be asked to play along with. So if they are auditioning for drums, for example, uh, we will play a track minus the drums. That means everything else in that song will be heard, but we will take off the drums so that the individual will play the drums. And so those who are also um, listening or taking the auditions or evaluating, whatever you want to call it, can hear what exactly the person is playing. Okay. Um, and there are some of the criteria that we would be looking into. So we give them everything, like everything what we are looking for uh, in them while they're auditioning. We look for song knowledge, detailing, uh, how well do they know the song or they're just going with the flow. Uh, you know, do they know the song structures really well, dynamics. Uh, you know, dynamic in music is pretty big, okay? We're not going to talk a lot about it. Uh, you know, the dynamics is a spectrum. Music dynamics is loud and softness in music and everything that happens in between of that. So are they just playing loud throughout the song or are they just playing soft through the song? Or is there a beautiful balance of they know when to play a little loud or increase the volume or and pull back when necessary? And all of that goes into translating how well they know the song, the knowledge of the song, right? Timing. Uh, timing is a big deal in music. <laughs> Keeping time. Um, I always, uh, <laughs> uh, this is this little personal thing, but you know, my mom can't sing in time. She can sing in pitch, uh, <laughs> you know, or during our prayer times, uh, family prayer and whatnot. Oh gosh, uh, <laughs> uh, like Ma, how many times? You know, I, 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 I lost the number of times. I said, Ma, keep time, please keep time. You know, I can't. Play. <laughs> um, so timing is um, very important, and uh, to check if they are able to play, uh, you know, in time. And technique, knowledge of the instrument, tone selection, clarity in playing. Uh, this is another thing. Uh, I apologize if there's if we are talking quite a lot about these things, but welcome to worship ministry. Okay, <laughs> all of these are something that we uh, have to look for. Technique of uh, say, uh, how well do they know know their instrument? Right. For example, if we're going to talk about uh, acoustic guitar, if a person is auditioning for acoustic guitar, uh, like, do they know their instrument really well, right? Or do they do they tune beginning basis? Basic is do they know to tune the guitar, right? Uh, do they know how to play a certain chords, uh, you know, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and then we go a little bit more deeper into. Uh, tone selection like the do they know how they want their instrument to sound do they have certain uh, specific gadgets uh, that you know that helps them in their playing so all of these are little details guys so we send it all out to them okay um, and uh, what else you can bring your we tell them we can you, they can bring their own instrument processes guitar processes gadgets uh, because they would be comfortable uh, with their own instrument we we offer our instruments, but then uh, sometimes they are, you know, comfortable with playing their guitar or whatnot, right? Um, so we tell them that. And if you're auditioning for singing, uh, we also say, please learn the songs listed under your category. Uh, you can bring the song words. Uh, we don't expect them to sing out of memory. They can take a printout of a song or on the phone, no problem. 
because they're already nervous. We don't want to make them more nervous by saying you have to sing it by memory. Uh, right? When we are leading worship, we look at the monitor for lyrics. So we have iPads. So, you know, it's cool. Uh, there will be a metronome playing to keep time. Metronome is a device that kind of keeps uh, time, you know, that gives uh, a recurring pulse, so to say. So, um, okay, so we, we play the click, and then someone play. There will be another person. If a person does not know to play an acoustic guitar while singing, this is for singers, keep in mind. Okay, when we are auditioning for singers, and most of the time, uh, you will hear, uh, I'm only a singer. I don't know how to play an instrument. Right? Uh, you will come across uh, them uh, quite a bit. Like, I can't play a guitar or a keyboard, uh, whatnot. So uh, we tell them, don't worry. We will have a person who will accompany you uh, with a guitar or a keyboard you know, to help you sing the song. So we arrange for that. Uh, and also some of the pointers that are shared with them are this these are some of the criteria that would be looked into uh, the tone of their voice uh, dynamics again singing loud singing soft so at the right places are they able to balance pitch uh, you know if <laughs> we can kind of uh, you know manage if the tone and dynamics are not great but then if the pitch is not great then uh, Kind of sing the right notes, important. Uh, timing is once again important. Harmony, ability to sing uh, in parts. Uh, it's not a must, but then it's another, uh, you know, it's an added benefit that we look for. So if they're able to sing in harmony and diction, uh, this is very crucial. Uh, I mean, as in, we don't expect perfection again here, but then. Uh, you know, at least in India, we have uh, what we would call as uh, first language influences, right? We all come from so many different backgrounds. Uh, we are rich uh, in cultures that way, isn't it? Uh, and with that, I mean, what we would call it as mother tongue influence is actually first language influences. There will be a certain words that are pronounced differently in a different language that can rub off or sh shown in uh, when you're singing, in your singing. Um, again, that's not like, you know, very, very crucial, but it is crucial. It is important. Um, you know, we, 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 we make sure you know that they pronounce the words right and what. Okay, so uh, we let them know that these are all the criteria. Okay, so above mentioned criteria is just to help you prepare, uh, cover these aspects, learn the song well, and just enjoy yourself. So all of this is one email, guys. <laughs> okay, Whew. right. So you can imagine, right? By the time the person starts the email and comes to the end of it, like wow. Okay. Um, but again, we, the whole idea is not to overwhelm them. Uh, the intention is not that. And through the process, we are in contact with the individuals who audition, who have registered for the audition, and uh, just providing them with any kind of help that they want, uh, making them feel as comfortable as possible, letting them know that we are there for them. And this is not some kind of an exam thing that you know we are longing to put them down if they don't do well or some sort. Uh, the point is we, you know, we let them know that, hey, we we are so excited that they are auditioning uh, and making them feel comfortable is our utmost priority. Okay, you guys with me so far? Yes. Okay. All right. Great. Well, thank you. Hey, hi, Vinas. Uh, yeah, sure. I'll share this doc. Uh, this, these are things I just copied from my emails and I put it in a Google Doc. So, yeah, I did something this morning. <laughs> okay, so now let's go to the, um, another important part. So now we've sent them an email, uh, you know, and whatnot, um, you know. So they come prepared for the auditions. The auditions are over. Okay, uh, they've auditioned and it's done now comes the follow-up process now what next after audition okay that is very important right obviously because you that doesn't end with the audition okay auditions are done what next okay so 
the next section is um, after the successful audition, uh, let's say that an individual has uh, met every criteria, they've learned the song well, uh, they've nailed their parts, uh, and you know they have an excellent, uh, you know, I mean, we get to know them just a little bit in that little bit, we gauge the, who they are and how they are, the calling of their life uh, and whatnot. We send another email. Right. Post, this is post successful auditions, like for into individuals who have uh, successfully, uh, what do I say, successfully completed the audition. Okay. Uh, so we say hello, so and so, thank you for coming forward into audition. Yada yada yada. Appreciate your pre uh, preparations. You know, we are happy to invite you to be part of the orient uh, worship team orientation process uh, for singing. Now, this is where another. Uh, process begins a test uh, a process a testing process is um, there is a orientation process post the audition and this that's what this email is going to uh, explain to the individual the orientation process okay so what is it going to look like uh, what does it look like the first step in the orientation process is the orientation meeting itself so uh, we will schedule a day and a time uh, most give them all those details and whatnot. We ask them to come uh, for this orientation process. It will be for approximately two or three hours meeting. Uh, we we take them through the we take them through the um, like the blueprint, uh, the the culture that is expected, uh, our vision of the worship team, like you know um, everything, our, our, our pursuit. Uh, all of that, that is shared, you know, a vision is shared, a pursuit uh, to them, the culture, some of the commitments that are expected is shared in this orientation meeting. And uh, there will be an hour and a half of, uh, say, a music class that is taken. We, we might have a music a session on music theory or band dynamics, how to play together as a band, um, you know, basics of music fundamentals will be taught in this orientation meeting. That's step number one. Uh, right, everyone is expected to attend the orientation meeting because this is part of the orientation process. Step number two is uh, we'll choose a Sunday. Pro uh, most often, the very following Sunday is uh, they will have a briefing session with the events coordinator. Uh, here, I you know now it's Stephen. It used to be Tarun. Uh, Tarun, do you remember right? <laughs> you used to take them through this. Uh, you know, so the Stephen is our events and service coordinator. Uh, he, you know, they will meet them at 9 a.m. Our service starts at 10.30 a.m. Uh, you know, this person will take them through different parts of the church, uh, the building of the church, saying, okay, this is where, you know, the children's church happened. Uh, this is where the setup team, this is what the setup team is doing, uh, you know, and, and all of that. So what Stephen will do is he will share about all the planning and preparation that goes into a Sunday morning service. The different teams that work together all that is expected of every volunteer team right um it's i am you know, wondering why is it important why is it necessary to know uh, for a worship team member to know what other teams are doing um first immediate thought is why not and uh, the second thing is you're still you're one team you your worship team but then you're one of the teams among 19 other teams to make one service happen so you we need to be in sync or in synergy uh, you know in in sync with every other team of what they are doing we need to know right uh, so we're getting a little bit more in detail so that's the second step of the orientation process um, and the third step is this is key rehearsals okay prepare and attend six worship team rehearsals you know um, the roster, the song list, practice venues, everything will be sent to these individuals. Um, so over the six weeks, what they have to do is, even before they are rostered, even before they start singing or playing in a Sunday service, before that happens, they have to attend six rehearsals, worship team practices, right? Um, and if you look at it, six rehearsals is almost six weeks. And that's almost more than a month, right? Um, and so already you can see our orientation process, our process to add, bring in people to the worship team itself is 
it's quite a process. It's like we are very particular about commitment, about people's faithfulness, uh, you know, their character. Because all of this, all of that, it will be tested in this orientation process. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter uh, who the individual is. That individual can be an absolute beginner uh, who's just play, been playing and say a guitar or singing for two years. Or there could be another individual who's an absolute professional pro music musician who's been playing, you know, an instrument or singing for 15 years. It doesn't matter. Everybody will be treated equally. If you want to be part of the APC worship team, this is the orientation process. Right? Some of them will be like, oh, why should I go through all these six weeks? You know, I already know how to play this instrument. I've been with other, you know, in this other city that I was in, the church that I was going to, I was uh, already playing with them. So I understand band dynamics. I know all of this. And so we, again, very politely and very gently let them know that uh, all of that is understood. But this is the process here at APC uh, where we expect every individual who wants to join the team to go through this process. So this is step three. And most of the time, this is like the breaking point uh, for the individuals, right? Um, and that's step number three. And then we have the Holy Spirit baptism, where we also encourage those uh, you know, who are joining the worship team to uh, attend the Holy Spirit baptism. Uh, in that way, you know, so most sometimes what will happen is uh, you, you, know, you get to know some, the doctrine that they believe in. Maybe not all individuals may necessarily subscribe uh, to the baptism of the Holy Spirit teaching or speaking in tongues and whatnot. But we at APC, we believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We believe in the Holy Spirit. We teach on the gifts uh, of the Holy Spirit, on the fruits of the Holy Spirit. We believe in speaking in tongues, all of that. And so to reiterate that, uh, we encourage those the individuals who have successfully completed the audition process as part of the orientation process to attend the Holy Spirit baptism uh, you know, uh, at, at any of their locations. So this is uh, the second email that goes out to those who have successfully uh, completed the orientation, uh, the audition process. And that's the, what we've just looked at is the orientation process. Okay. Yes, all good. Any questions or anything so far? Yes, Shri Kumar, go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks. Sir. Uh, sir, I, I, I have a small uh, uh, doubt uh, regarding to music. Um, I just want to know that, is it right uh, as a Christian worship leader, uh, learning the, the Carnatic music or uh, classicals, because, um, you know, uh, it is connected with uh, something else. So, uh, so I just want to know that, you know, uh, like in many Christian musics, we can Especially in Indian music, we can uh, know the Karnataka, yeah. you know, this this like this thing is used. So whether yeah. it is, uh, the, uh, and these are not like uh, you know Western Western kind of a music, but these are all I don't know what the Western <laughs> music is associated with what. But uh, yeah. especially we know that as in India, this Carnatic music are connected with something else. So uh, right. like uh, if somebody asks me that question, that whether if 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 uh, you know. If somebody wants to learn Carnatic music, so that they can tomorrow right. they can use the music for, for to uh, you know for the God's glory. So is, right. it, is that uh, is right. it right to advise them to do that? Thank you, sir. That's my question. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Shri Kumar. That's a lovely question. So, um, so the way I will look at it, this Carnatic uh, Carnatic is Carnatic music is associated with the south the southern part of India, and there's Hindustani music that is also Hindustani classical associated with. Uh, with the north, uh, northern India that comes from. Um, now, there are fundamentals of it, uh, as in the, the basics of it uh, is kind of general to, you know, every individual that can learn, like say, Sare Gama is what in Western is Dore Mi Fa, Solati Do, like Sare Gama, you know, so that's part of Carnatic classical. Do I need to learn that? Absolutely, <laughs> right? Uh, it's for me to know uh, the scale, the, to sing the scale and whatnot. So, but there is always a point uh, where, uh, uh, I mean, certain chants are written to a certain, uh, ascribed or attributed to certain gods or goddesses, etc. So, 
uh, that's where we draw the line. But then there is a fundamentals uh, that is you can learn if you want to. Because I'm saying that because uh, uh, I learned a part of uh, what they call it as uh, in Carnatic music in Konnakol is uh, you say the rhythm like like takita ta. Ta, 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 you know all of that is you're just saying the rhythm and that's Carnatic way and I wanted to learn that to uh, implement that on my uh, drum kit because uh, uh, Indian rhythms uh, kind of uh, pushes you Indian rhythms are very technical in terms of uh, the, their complexity uh, it's very good for your independence like your mental exercises like for your left brain to think differently from your right brain for your right hand to do something different independent from your left hand so it pushes uh, your skill and so that way so i learned it to apply and apply that on my drum kit so and uh so that i would say that's okay but then again you will know at a certain point uh you know where to stop as like a certain chant is written for some assign you know ascribed to a certain god or goddesses that's where you say okay yeah no <laughs> thank you sir thank you yeah okay you're welcome okay, any other thoughts anybody uh questions or anything okay Cool. So we've looked at um, an email that is sent uh, before the audition, expecting them to learn the songs and come. And then we've looked at another email that is sent out uh, uh, for those who have successfully completed the audition process and telling them about the orientation process. Now, uh, very important email. <laughs> we have to tell those who did not get selected in the aud audition process in the audition. So that is also very important, isn't it? Uh, it's very sensitive like okay you know how do we sell an individual uh, they did not get through uh, the audition process uh, you know without breaking their spirit uh, and encouraging them to re-audition uh, whatnot right? so that's what this email kind of looks like is again hello thank you for auditioning on sunday really appreciate your time and effort to, uh, towards this um, so we let them know while evaluating the auditions it was felt that two main areas needed more work and strengthening right so we let them know uh, there were two areas uh, that we you know kind of saw that required more work and strengthening one is timing and singing a harmony that means this individual was uh, not able to sing in time keep time and also, uh, they were not uh, understanding what singing in harmony meant, right? So uh, one of our evaluators would have already had a chat with them. So whoever evaluated different sections, so there will be uh, evaluators for drums, the two individuals who will evaluate for acoustic guitars and for vocals, you know, from the worship team. And so a person for, who've evaluated uh, the certain team uh, section will already have had a chat with them and only then this email will go out so and then we let them know so do take some time to strengthen these two areas and once you feel confident about this you can you could re-audition in august we let them know that they can re-audition right dates will be announced in church uh so we don't just let them you know uh we say okay sorry you know you didn't get selected for the audition by you know or a war sayonara <laughs> no uh, we let them know the areas that they can work on in addition to that we also share uh, some of the resources uh, you know that they can uh, use to you know that can help them right so for you if you can see in the document that uh, there's some of the links youtube links that are shared that can help them uh, with their timing those are all tutorials uh, that will help them this is a tutorial on pitch uh, range breathing uh, all of it so we make sure that you know we've done our part we've not just said okay you know you you didn't do the audition well so we're washing off our hands and whatnot uh, we do our part we go an extra mile and say you know here are the resources that we think might help you so please work on it and re-audition and uh it'll be amazed how many people have worked on it and come back and uh, you know pass uh pass <laughs> have successfully completed the audition process um, so there you have it guys uh, that's the audition process at the APC okay uh, any thoughts any questions after this
So is that clear? Do you understand uh, the importance of audition process? Yeah, okay. Yes, sir. Yes, Pastor. Especially the last uh, point is really a learning point. How to say no without breaking the spirit. I have always have a tough time saying that, telling the truth in love. Or so Thank you oh. for sharing that. And uh, most oh, of the audition part of, yeah, and that one, it's a new learning for, because we don't know all those things. We just have to dwell on them to learn. Thank you, Pastor. You're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, I realize that you know most of the things that we discussed today, you might not be directly involved in an audition process uh, and whatnot. But then I think it's it's a it's a good to know information, like an FYI, like this is how a worship ministry should function because you might a worship ministry might come under your supervision, your leadership, right? So you need to have insights on that. Um, so that's what this course is all about, basically. It's, you know, just giving a sneak peek into worship ministry. Um, anything else? Yes. Okay. Uh, we'll just very quickly, uh, you know, before concluding this section, we'll talk about uh, rostering, right? So uh, that's another part. We I, I've shared with you what uh, how an APC roster looks like. Um, and if you come down to page uh, 48, in the first half, um, that's the message uh, you know we usually send out to the members of the worship team, right? We uh, uh, we have a broadcast list on WhatsApp, yeah, yay WhatsApp. <laughs> okay, we send them out saying, uh, and so this is a message we, which was sent out, uh, I think, a couple of years ago in December. This is just an example, okay. So try and make it a little interesting as possible because we are doing this every month. Um, it was around December. So yeah, we are halfway through November, which means it's time to finish the year with a bang. Kindly send your availability for December's worship team roster. Uh, by We give them a deadline saying, OK, they have to send their availability, their dates, by November 20th evening. And we also give additional information saying, okay, there are four Sundays in December plus two combined services for Christmas and New Year's uh, Eve service. Right? Um, FII worship teams for December 1st is also, all of that, that's not necessary. Um, so I will also send out the dates. These are the dates uh, in December, you know, Sundays 8th, 15th, 22nd, 29th, and uh, the Christmas services on the 25th, which is a Wednesday, New Year's. Um, and so what they do is they start sending me their dates one by one i i keep getting messages uh, ding okay 18 8th and 22nd 15th and 29th december is one of those notorious months right because uh like you, like you can see the four services sometimes there are five sundays and then two uh, special services like combined services we have christmas and new year's right so and and that's the month where everybody wants to go on vacation Right, and suddenly your 50 member worship team is now reduced to 25, and you're looking for people. It's like, what can we do? Where are these? You know, where are they? Oh, you can't do anything, isn't it? Because they're volunteering and um, they're traveling. It's, everybody wants to go on a vacation. It's Christmas time, etc., uh, etc. Et so, uh, getting the dates, their availability in advance, because uh, it takes. So, Pastor Jakes and me work on the roster. It takes us at least one week. At least, I'm saying at least one week to complete the roster. And uh, to finish the roster, we have multiple phone calls and say, okay, who can we put here? Okay, you know, this person is not available there. Okay, so who can we put there? Uh, what can we do? No one is available to play the bass. What can we do? Should I fill in for bass, etc., etc. <laughs> so, uh, the congregation will not see all of this, right? That what everything that goes on behind the scenes, they don't need to see it, right? But uh, this is just another insight behind the scene, um, exclusive footage of what happens behind the scenes of, of the worship team. Uh, just get the team to play. Uh, it's um, quite a jolly ride, I should say. Um, so that's how uh, you know the roster thing works. The message is sent out. They send in their dates, and we start balancing. We start putting together the team. 
uh, together. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, about the roster. We will pause here. We will take a break, and uh, we'll get back in ten minutes. Okay, see you guys.